Hey everybody, welcome to Tactical Back from the Dead edition. Part of the reason I stopped making videos is it take too fucking long to edit. So instead, you know what? I'm gonna just do it in smaller bites. I am gonna just commit to making uh, short form editorials. Whenever I get the idea to post like a Reddit comment or discussion or something like that that I think would benefit the community, I'm gonna come here instead and just vocalize it, even though I'm a much better writer than I am a presenter. Okay, now that's out of the way, uh, intro and let's get started. Shh. Anyway, on to today's topic. Let's discuss SSD prices in 2018. Late 2018, if you happen to be watching this in the past. Over the last few months, NAND in general has sunk like a stone in terms of price. There's a massive oversupply. It's predicted to drop even more going into next year. And as a result, SSDs are much cheaper. And because of the increased density of this NAND, SSD volumes are going up as well. So here in Canada on Amazon, any day of the week, pretty much this week, you could pick up a two terabyte Crucial MX500 or uh, I don't know, a Samsung 960 Evo or whatever fucking drive you wanted for around $300. Two terabytes for 300 Canadian dollars is something that would have been unheard of even just a year ago. And while these prices do seem tempting, I'm here to sort of temper those tits a bit. Basically, this entire point boils down to one question you should be asking yourself. And I know what you're saying too. You're gonna, you're thinking, oh, Jeff, you're gonna tell me to ask myself the same question you always tell me to ask myself. And that question typically is, do I really need this? But that's too much of an oversimplification for the point I'm trying to illustrate. The real question you should be asking yourself is, can I really make use of this? Let me explain. Can you find ways to fill a two terabyte SSD? Absolutely, I don't doubt it. You guys do a lot of sick shit. You have a lot of fucking lolly porn in that goddamn homework folder. But if we're really being honest with ourselves about what we use our computers for, I think you'll start to see what my reservations are about. Let's go over all of the typical use scenarios for a personal computer in the home of the average user. So first up, let's say your intent is to use a single SSD as your boot drive and boot drive alone. Well, this is obviously something we can discount right away because you don't need two terabytes as a boot drive. If you're the kind of person who is using it as a boot drive plus programs, okay, then you're getting to need a little bit more space. Maybe you put the page file on there as well, if you even have a page file. All these things can add up to a little bit more room. Maybe you're in the 512 gigabyte range just to be safe and have peace of mind. But let's say you want to take it a step further. Let's say you're the kind of person who wants to have their boot drive as well as their programs and their games on an SSD. Okay, now you're talking. Games can get to be big. AAA titles are upwards of 100 gigabytes. So I can certainly see a justification for one terabyte drives, maybe. I myself very easily get by on two 512 gigabytes. One is sort of for video editing, like active video storage, and the other one is meant for boot programs and the odd game. But getting up to two terabytes takes a lot of mental gymnastics to really justify. Let's say you're the kind of person who's indecisive. You have serious choice paralysis. You've got a big Steam library and you want to just install a bunch of games and bounce between them. In addition to maybe some Battle Royale, maybe you do some arena shooters, Maybe you have an MMO or two that you like to play on side. Maybe you do Minecraft with fucking shaders and custom textures. I don't know what the fuck. Even if you are the most indecisive of gamers and you can't seem to commit to one title for any longer than five minutes, you probably still can't fill that two terabytes. And even if you could fill two terabytes worth of SSD space. Are you doing it just because you bought the drive or did you buy the drive because the necessity existed? Continuing along those lines, there are obviously gonna be some of you who would argue that the peace of mind of just having a large drive that you don't have to worry about and micromanage is in itself a value added proposition. I would tend to agree with you. I think that's at least somewhat of a justification. And being that it's the kind of justification that's difficult to quantify, it really all depends on things like your income level and how much of it you can dispose in a given month without hurting your lifestyle or damaging your family or having to fucking take a second mortgage out in your house. So it's not just a matter of can I use it? And it's not just a matter of will I buy it and then find a way to use it so I justify purchasing it. But thirdly, of course, you have to consider what else you could have bought with that money that may have improved your experience. Off the top of my head, some other things right now in today's market that cost 
roughly 300 Canadian dollars are as follows. Mid-range graphics cards. Possible you'll maybe pick up a 1070 for that price secondhand. I actually bought one new for about 330 bucks before taxes from Staples because of a pricing error. Certainly you'll buy an RX 580. It'll get you a 144 Hertz 1080p TN panel. So if your monitor sucks, you want to go high refresh rate, there's your chance. There are some pretty goddamn good CPUs, like not just mid-range, like close to the high-end mainstream stuff like uh, you know r7 2700s that are sort of in that range as well extra ram i mean ram prices are still not great but from what i can see they're about as low as they've been in what feels like at least two years now or so so it maybe you've been stuck on eight for a while and you're finally at that limit where some games and some applications will benefit from upgrading to 16 or even 32 so even if you can justify all that other fucking shit i talked about you still have to think about what else that money could have been used for even if it's just like a really good hooker for half an hour and finally one other thing you should keep in mind is that like I said at the beginning of the video, NAND prices are predicted to continue dropping into the new year. So in the very near short term, uh, it could get a lot better than $300 on Black Friday for a two terabyte drive. So what that really comes down to is not only do you need it, but do you need it like right the fuck now? Or can you wait six months? Because if you can wait six months and your experience is still really pleasant, I would recommend waiting. Okay, so we've gotten all the points against out of the way. So who should be buying drives like this? If you are a video editor or you deal with large media files in any capacity, I don't know what else that would be. I'm a, I'm a video maker myself. I can tell you that working from an SSD and editing does cut out a lot of the bullshit. So having a second SSD in your system or even using this as your primary uh, coupled with the operating system uh, giving you that extra space that's high speed storage certainly helps with, you know, playing around with large files and whatnot. And it, it once again gives you that peace of mind of knowing you can have several projects on the go and not just suddenly run out of space when you weren't looking. Secondly, large SSDs as game libraries are really effective for people who live in areas where their internet service providers are pieces of shit. I myself have incredibly fast internet here in Toronto and I have no cap in terms of how much I can download, so I don't really care. But you might not be in that position where you can get that kind of internet at an affordable price. A large volume SSD will help with that. It will allow you to set those, you know, 10 or 15 downloads on your Steam account overnight or over a week if your internet's particularly slow. Let them all finish and give you a place to house the next 10 AAA titles that you had planned on playing. As long as you're good about sticking to your queue, so to speak, and you don't deviate too much, it can be incredibly beneficial and probably well worth the $300, especially if your ISP is charging you a lot of money for going over your cap. My point in this video is this. I know, generally speaking, you're bright people, especially if you watch my videos. But it just kind of never hurts to have someone come along and give you a nice, healthy, friendly ASMR reminder. Anyway, I am Ofa, this has been Tech Tickle, and remember, you can't spell homeowner without meow. I've been talking for 25 fucking minutes? What the fucking cocksucking company?